Hi guys and welcome back to another ACE MRCOG video. Today I wanted to talk to you about the management of premenopausal ovarian cysts. Now I've all been there, sat in clinic and the GPs referred a young woman with an ovarian cyst that had just been found incidentally on an ultrasound scan. So here's a short video on what to do with these premenopausal ovarian cysts. So the first thing to note is that luckily ARCOG have a great guideline on this. So after seeing this video, make sure that you have a look at that guideline, especially their flowcharts at the bottom of the guideline. Now here's a flowchart that I've made myself and this one is for simple ovarian cysts. Now remember, there are broadly two groups of premenopausal women who've got simple ovarian cysts. Those that are asymptomatic, running at the top here, and those that have symptoms, and usually this is pain. For those that are symptomatic, that's relatively easy. All you need to do is take a history, examine the patient, and assess whether the woman needs to undergo laparoscopic surgery. And it doesn't matter whatever the size of that cyst on the scan. For those that are asymptomatic, you still need to clinically assess them, but the management is going to be based on the size of the cyst. And we group these women into a further three categories. Cysts that are less than five centimetres, these women can just be discharged. Cysts that are five to seven centimetres, and what we would do here is repeat the scan in 12 months. And lastly, ovarian cysts that are over seven centimetres. And again, here we need to consider laparoscopic surgery. What happens if the scan shows a complex ovarian cyst? Well, I'll take you to this flowchart here at the bottom. So if there's a complex ovarian cyst with septations, or if there are solid components on the ultrasound scan, you're gonna do four tumor markers. The first is CA125, and if they're less than 40, we're gonna do an alpha theta protein, an LDH, and also beta HCG. And these three hormones really are looking for sex cord tumors, or dysgerminomas. Now clearly if these three hormones, the AFP, LDH or beta HCG are raised, that's easy. You're just gonna refer straight to gynae oncology MDT. But if they're normal, we're then gonna look at the CA125. If the CA125 is less than 200, well then we need to think, why has this one got a complex ovarian cyst? Could it be an endometrioma? Or could it be just a fibroid on the uterus? If we don't find those things and there's still concerns about malignancy, then again, very easy. We just refer straight to the gynae oncology MDT. Now, if the CA125 is greater than 200 and we can't find any reason for it either, then again, nice and simple, refer straight to the gynae oncology MDT. That's it for now, but feel free to watch some more ACE MRCOG videos for more gems for the part two MRCOG. See you soon.